Hello everybody, I would like to show you something about the new feature of Dual Mesh. Dual Mesh is actually one of the first features that I added to Tissue, but now, as you can see, we have two different options that seem really similar, but they work in a different way. The first one is Dual Mesh, and as you can see, is in the group Tessellate, and we will see why. The other one is under Other, and it's called Convert to Dual Mesh that is actually the old dual mesh feature that we have seen also in Blender 2.79. So let's start with this one that is quite similar to the old one, it's quite simple. So if you select one generic object like this, I, as you can see, we have three different spheres with three different uh, uh, mesh tessellations. And um, let's select, for example, this icosphere, it's just the default icosphere. If I press convert to dual mesh, it will convert this mesh to a polygonal mesh. This polygonal mesh that you can see is actually what you almost can see if you add to a triangular mesh like this one, a subdivision surface. As you can see, it's a kind of pattern emerge in this case. And if you extract just this pattern, removing the vertices of the original mesh, what you get is exactly this dual mesh here. Okay, so we have something similar also for this one. So let me show you if I copy that, convert to dual mesh. Same idea. In this case, uh, if you add a subdivision surface to a mesh with a quad, you get other quad usually, like this. But if you before adding a subdivision surface, you triangulate a mesh like this, you get a polygonal pattern. So, this is how basically, let me remove this, this is how basically the convert to dual mesh works. If we want to see also that one, convert to dual mesh, okay, same thing, good. So, what it is in the, instead doing dual mesh that you can see we can see inside the tessellate uh, options. So if you, oh, I, let me add a new icosphere. Okay, great, cool. Okay, so let's start from uh, this UV sphere. If I click on a dual mesh here, oh, this is, okay, sorry. Okay, delete, okay, dual mesh. Good, okay. The result seems quite similar. The only difference that you probably see is that uh, instead of converting this, it's creating a new object. But if you take a look here in the outline, you will see that you have now a new object that is, automatic, uh, is automatic, automatically created and also hidden. If you show that object, you will see that is actually, uh, oh, let me make it selectable, okay. You will see that it's actually a plane divided in that way. So basically what it's doing is doing a tessellation of this on this. So if I do a normal tessellation and I press OK, you will see exactly that you have a similar pattern that we have seen before. The only thing that is also automatically added is a feature that I called the solve seams that as you can see in this component, the border edge are marked at seams. So with a new version of uh, tissue and the tessellation, when you check the settings for a tessellation, you will see that once you have merged everything, all the, all the single component, you have an option that is called dissolve seams. So it tries, if possible, to dissolve all the edge that are marked as seams. So which, which, is the, which is the advantage of using this technique instead of the old operator? Well, the thing is that now you can, for example, uh, change something in the original mesh, like, for example, adding a, a wave, okay? And now you can refresh this and see the updates of that. If you also set it as uh, animatable, if you press play, you will see that the dual mesh is now animated. So this allows you to create a non-destructive workflow using also dual mesh, and before it wasn't possible, unfortunately.
still using convert dual mesh is not possible. It just you can do that, that just using the dual mesh that have behind the tessellate operator. So there is just a tricky thing that you have to take into consideration when you use uh, this uh, uh, this dual mesh here is that by default it works fine. It works fine with quadrangular mesh like this sphere for example also if you have some triangles here you will see that at the end you will get just a circle on the poles okay and also works fine with this kind of geometry that have only quad in this case this is a cube with a subdivision surface and a cast for making it spherical so if i use dual mesh here you will see also that by default it uses the modifiers so what you see is what is uh, used for generating the dual mesh okay and it works quite fine but for example, if you have a triangular uh, mesh, like a default icosphere, if you use dual mesh, it gives you some strange results like this. And the reason is that you have to manually choose if you want to work with a triangular mesh or a quadrangular mesh. So if I press again dual mesh, you will see that here you have just a couple of settings. One is apply modifier that by default is on and the other is the source faces by default is quad faces but you can choose triangles and in this case uh, you will see exactly that uh, the component that used for triangular meshes is actually a bit different it's quite simple and it's that so you have just a plane uh, split in two with all the edges that are marked as seams and in this case the tessellation use uh, instead of a regular quad uh, fill mode use a fan so basically if i do a tessellation of, of this on this tessellate and instead of quad i set fan okay i get this and again with this geometry if i use uh, merge and then dissolve seams i get a dual mesh so actually I try to achieve the same result, but instead of using some uh, uh, new function or uh, more um, or subdividing the mesh and using the old procedure, in this case I can use just the regular tessellate. And you have all the advantages of uh, the tessellation, so it's animatable and uh, you have uh, many settings that you can use, of course. Okay, so I hope that it, you find it useful and... Uh, as usual, if you have any feedbacks, any errors, you can report to me. Okay, thank you. Bye.